What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today, we're going to be talking about Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Remembering Nicole. And man, episode 7 was flat out crazy. Your girl, Nicole, she met her fate. Um, she was not able to survive in this power universe, but she was a good character, I would say, um, for Jukebox. And of course, we know the aftermath of all of this is going to be very, very bad. And this is going to be one of the reasons why Jukebox is the way she is in the original power. This is just one of those pieces that made her a savage. But we're definitely going to talk about that in this video. Now, make sure you checked out my episode 7 recap that I dropped last night, as well as the episode 8 What to Expect video that I dropped earlier on in the day. But let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about Nicole's journey um, in Power Book 3 Raising Canaan. We was introduced to Nicole even before the episode was even aired out before you know the season was even started you know they dropped exclusive clips and stuff i broke it down um about nicole we know nicole and jukebox met at a choir competition um we saw in that particular scene that the two definitely had chemistry that they liked each other and that this was going to be you know a very interesting storyline right um and at first it did seem kind of shaky on certain things because jukebox did not want nicole to feel sorry for her like she could not afford things or she was some type of charity case uh, which nicole ended up realizing she was just you know trying to help her out and once jukebox saw that like that when nicole was actually there for her it made her open up even more and it made jukebox like nicole even more and everything was good at the beginning but we knew watching this early on it was going to end bad somehow some way we knew um everybody was not going to accept what was going on as far as their relationship and we knew nicole hanging around jukebox for you know entirely too long can lead to bad things and that's exactly what happened now at first nicole's mind was cool she was definitely cool at first at least that's what she seemed like nicole told her yeah my mom is okay only on certain things but if it's something that she does not like you will know and when they, you know, showed us that, I had a feeling that her mind would bust in. You know, Nicole was not locking the door at all. So we knew eventually that would be the case. We knew Nicole's parents would find out first about Jukebox and Nicole. But even after that, the two still stuck together. Um, they came closer and closer. Um, Nicole told Jukebox not to, you know, boost clothes anymore. You know, she doesn't need to do this. Jukebox did not listen at first, but then she stopped. She said, you know what? I'm going to take Nicole's advice. Um, you know, I almost got in huge trouble trying to boost this jacket. And you know what? I'm going to give this jacket to Nicole um, to make up for this. And of course, you know, Jukebox, first love and her first time getting it down was with your girl, Nicole. And this is why Jukebox will never forget Nicole. This is why I say this is one of those moments. Losing Nicole is one of those moments that would definitely make Jukebox more savage. And we just know by watching the episode 8 trailer, Jukebox's demeanor is completely different. Now, of course, Jukebox, only person she could really tell about Nicole was Rock. Of course, Rock told Jukebox, well, we both deserve to feel good sometimes. And even after finding out the truth about Nicole, Rock was still there to support Jukebox. She told her, look, she's not Marvin. She is here for her. And she's here to accept whatever Jukebox, you know, sexuality is, right? Now, of course, we knew eventually this would happen. Jukebox and Nicole, they end up getting caught. As I just told you guys, did not lock the doors at all. Um, we knew this was going to happen. Her mom comes in. She straights up disrespects Jukebox, um, calls her repellent. Dogs are out. Says she does not want her in this house ever again. Um, and at this particular moment, we just knew that this is going to be very bad you know what i'm saying and to be 100 percent honest maybe they should have took a little break and let things cool off maybe that would have been the best decision but of course these are you know youngsters they're in love they want to be with each other so even though her mom was saying those disrespectful things nicole she said you know what i want to be with her i don't care what my parents are saying my mom's not going to dictate my life I'm going to be with Laverne. And this is what Nicole did. She still went over there. She supported Jukebox. 
Um, and once Jukebox asked her to come to this whole music showcase, this is where I knew it was going to be bad. We already knew at this showcase it was going to be a huge fight, right? So Nicole being there, to me, I just had that bad feeling like, okay, it's going to be some bad news, right? Nicole gets there. We understand that your boy Crown has laced his blunt. Nicole takes a hit of the blunt and instantly we can see her demeanor completely change. And we already know what time it is. We know Nicole is definitely going to change. Now, some say one hit is not going to change you. Well, you're right, but it can change you enough. And it definitely, I believe, changed Nicole enough for her to be more eager to get high again, to try different things. I mean, that one hit definitely motivated her to do what she did in the very next episode. Now, even besides that, Nicole still seemed like she controlled herself um, because that wasn't the bad crack that Kanan cooked up. She was still able to be there and, of course, be responsive to Jukebox. And she told Jukebox, look, I want to be with you, no one else but you. And for a small moment, man, it seemed like Jukebox will have a happy ending. Everything will be good. You know what I'm saying? Nicole's here still, even though her mom is, you know, running her mouth. It doesn't matter because Nicole's going to be here to stay. Now, of course, in the last episode, Nicole made her biggest mistake ever. After Jukebox gives her this custom-made tape and goes to get Nicole a pretzel, Nicole decides to go into Jukebox's bag after putting a card in there. She sees the product. She sees, you know, this messed up, cooked up, evil, toxic crack, right? And she takes it. Now, she could have easily just asked Jukebox what this was. But see, that's not going to happen because Nicole has already been high with that lace blunt before. She wants to feel good. She wants to get this off. She believes like, okay, maybe I can, you know what I'm saying, take this and she would not even know about it. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, this is something that you don't leave around. But remember, Jukebox was just trying to help her cousin Kanan out. She was just trying to get rid of this product that way that Kanan won't get into trouble with Detective Howard. But see, it did not play the way Jukebox planned it to play out. She was really just trying to be a good cousin. Um, Nicole later on in the episode is listening to the tape Jukebox made for her. She's feeling herself. She's, of course, loving the lyrics that Jukebox is singing to her. And, of course, we knew Nicole was going to take a hit of this. And that's all she wrote after that. And as Nicole is hitting this pipe, um, of course, it was like a, I will say, a calm before the storm. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like, man, hopefully she's good. We already seen what the drug did to those two crackheads earlier on in the episode. But as Nicole hits it, it was like a moment of silence. It was like, please, maybe it's not going to happen to her. But it did. And it's the harsh reality. Things like this actually happen. Just because you're rich, you're white, it does not matter. Things like this happen all the time. Um, we've seen this time and time again with our celebrities of today's world and yesterday from the past i mean things like this just happen man um but of course nicole her journey in this power universe it came to an end and now we get to the aftermath of what's going to happen the whole season jukebox has been mentioning on how no one really cares about if something happens to a black girl or a black person but everybody runs when it's a white girl so we're going to see if jukebox is I will say theory is going to be right um, about this. All I know is this. Once Jukebox finds out the truth, she's going to be very, very pissed off. Nicole's mother is going to be very, very pissed off as well. And I'm trying to figure out if Jukebox is going to talk to Nicole's mother. We know Nicole's mother will be in this next episode um, from my understanding. And if her and Jukebox have another encounter, it may not be good. Trust me, it may not be good, but based off the episode 8 trailer, Jukebox is not in the right state of mind and it makes all the sense in the world. Look at her demeanor. Um, even when she was talking to Kanan, she does not seem in the right place um, and it's only going to get worse. It's going to take some time for Jukebox to fully heal from this and to be honest with you guys, mentally she probably would never fully heal from losing Nicole. And it's just sad, man, because they really did like each other. They had a lot of love for each other. And, you know, it ended in a tragic way, which, you know, was an early prediction all along that this would not end well. So today we are remembering your girl, Nicole. Um, now, the actress 
that plays Nicole Annabelle Zazowski. She did an excellent job playing this role. She killed it, man. She definitely killed it. She showed her range. She switched it up. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm happy that they picked her for this role. Now, hopefully she gets other roles in different TV shows. But her and Jukebox together, um, they definitely knocked it out of the park. It's sad to see her go. But, you know, this show has gave her an opportunity to expand her talent and hopefully she's able to join new projects, which I think is going to happen. Usually power helps a lot of new um, actors and actresses get out there and make a name for themselves. So once again, we have another one. But you guys let me know, man. What do you think is going to happen next? Um, let me know how you felt about your girl, Nicole. Her biggest mistake was being around Jukebox entirely too much and stealing from Jukebox. But, you know, like I said, it all stemmed from, you know, hitting that lace blunt and in reality we don't know every deep dark secret of nicole she could have been doing all types of stuff before she met jukebox but at the end of the day we know where she got that product from it's sad that it happened that way but it is the reality and now we sit back and wait to see the aftermath of losing nicole but um Thank you guys for all the love, all the support. I will continue to break down these characters, break down the storylines. We're going to continue to get ready for episode eight. Follow the playlist. Keep yourself updated on all the latest Power Book 3 Raising Canaan news. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.